This is Mike Bot. Welcome to my resin 3D printing series. Today's video is going to be on resin. What is the best resin to choose and why? There are so many options out there from so many different manufacturers. Uh, I'm not going to go through every single manufacturer. I'm just going to focus on Anycubic, mainly because I have an Anycubic M5S Pro. Uh, I will link that in the description below. And I also have the Anycubic Wash and Cure Station. I previously had the 3.0 plus station which fell apart and i returned and now i have the wash and cure station max i also have a video on that and it'll also be in the description so which resin to choose it's complicated they have so many options all the vendors have so many different options of resin why do they have so many well each one has its own unique properties to it and its own style for what you need to do most of the V1 resins are on sale right now because they got rid of them. Uh, they had issues, so now all, you're going to see a lot of V2 resins with a lot of the manufacturers. So the V2 resins have, well, the standard one at least has low odor. It's stronger. Uh, it has more resistance to bending, and it's got fairly good accuracy when it comes to printing. You need to use UV to cure it, and IPA 95% or higher to wash it. It is toxic. You need to take proper precautions to protect your hands, your face. Um, wear a mask when you're doing this. If it splashes on your hands, expect chemical burns. Splashes in your eye, expect a visit to the emergency room. Take proper precautions. The first time I did resin printing, which was not even a month ago, I got severe chemical burns in several places. Big mistake. So make sure you take those precautions and make sure you have proper ventilation. I have not massive exhaust system in my printing room to vent all the fumes out i also run two air purifiers and then i run the air purifier on the anycubic station itself i also have air purifiers throughout the house and i run the fans whenever i'm printing that's how bad this stuff is it'll give you a headache it'll get you sick it'll burn you it'll cause irreparable damage so like i said this uv resin the standard one at least there's a normal version and a plus version Plus version is kind of like looking at it like PLA versus PLA plus. The color options are kind of limited with the standard resin to black, gray, white, beige, and clear. And then now they have the translucent green, which is nice. The cost of the standard resin is the cheapest out of all of them. So that's it for the standard resin. Next, I will talk about the colored resin, the colored UV resin. So for that, let me go to Eligu here. So with the colored UV resin, same idea as the standard plus resin, except it has color in it. So expect stronger smell and more severe chemical burns. So seriously, take what I'm saying very, very serious. Protect yourself, ventilate. So with the colored resin, they add some additives to give you colors. The color selection is very limited. The price is more expensive versus standard resin. For the most part, people paint their resin prints. Uh, for that, you're going to need primer and paint and acrylic is the way to go in my opinion color resin essentially just gives you color that's it color there's no strength additives or anything like that uh, and it smells a lot worse than the regular standard resin so make sure your ventilation is up to par with that and that's basically it for the color so i have sunlu here because i just want to show off how much cheaper sunlu is so we're looking at gray Look at the price increase. It's only five bucks more. So Sunlu is cheaper than the rest. Uh, I do have some Sunlu. I haven't tried it out yet, but it's nice to have a cheaper cost alternative out there. So next, I'm going to talk about the plant-based resin. This stuff is also priced, I guess, similar to the rest, except this one has, uh, it's made with plants. Still the same, high precision, quick curing, low odor, you still need a mask and all that stuff. And the only real difference here is that um, it's a little bit more resilient. So it's slightly tougher than the other stuff. And it doesn't crack very easily or break. And that's just another option they give you. When it's on sale, it's worth buying. When it's not on sale, it's expensive. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna pick some plant resin up here and I'm gonna go with translucent green. See what I mean? It's expensive uh, let me see what the cheapest one is here and i'm gonna pick that up i don't know why those are there look at that 45 dollars when it's on on sale it's not cheap so 
So what I'll do is I'm going to do another video down the road and uh, I'll show you the different types of resins and what they look like when they're finished. So let me add that to cart. All right, so next we will talk about the water wash resin. So this stuff, you don't have to use IPA. So with the plant-based, the color-based, and the standard, you got to use IPA to wash it. With this one, you use water. So it's slightly, slightly safer, not really much safer, but you don't need IPA, which is really expensive. It's just simple water. So the beauty of this, the uh, odor is, uh, it has low odor compared to the others. It still stinks. It'll still give you a headache, but it's also it has a lower viscosity and a shorter exposure time at higher print speeds. So the nice thing about this water washable resin is you can take a shortcut uh, price wise buying this versus high speed resin which I will talk about at the end of this video. So it, it's worth trying but I've also heard that this stuff breaks very easily and it cracks very easily so keep that in the back of your mind before you purchase water based resin. That's why I haven't bought any and I'm not going to take a chance with it just because it's still expensive for something that may not turn out properly. So next we'll talk about the ABS like. So there's the standard and there's the B2. The plus is obviously a little bit stronger. It's got uh, more hardness. It's tougher. It's tensile bending strength is better, but it's also a lot more smelly than your typical resins. So this one, you definitely need ventilation. If you don't have ventilation, don't even bother with this. It's going to destroy you and the house smell wise. It has low shrinkage rate and it also uh, has a better reduction and warping and cracking during printing which is nice it has a good temperature resistance so it can withstand higher temperatures so that makes it perfect for objects that might be exposed to heat so the nice thing about the abs like resin is it's like printing with abs but with resin so it has that advantage so for functional parts or parts that need strength this is the way to go obviously there is a high cost associated to this one as well so the normal ABS like resin and the plus one, I guess we can call it is similar. Just one is stronger than the other. And then they have the ABS like resin pro version, and this is the V2. So I will add this to cart so I can run it through the tests that I was talking about. And I think I'm going to see if the transparent greens on sale. Yeah. And grab that. So the nice thing about the resin pro is that it has a much higher bending resistance and hardness compared to the ABS like resin plus. They also managed to somehow make the smell um, better, or I shouldn't say better, but it doesn't stink as much as the other ABS-like resin. So you have some advantages for sure with that. This resin also has the high quality detail still. I don't know how it's going to compare, but that's why I'm going to be running the tests in the next video I'm going to do, or might be two or three videos from now. But look for it in my channel. Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can keep an eye on it all. Then we have tough. So you got your ABS, then you got your tough. The first thing you're going to notice is the tough stuff is very expensive. What's the difference between this and ABS? I don't really know, to be honest. It's makes no sense to buy tough when you have ABS like uh, pro version, at least. Right. But this one is supposed to be uh, it's supposed to be resistant to cracks and breaks while bending and it has a high impact strength. I don't think it's resistant to heat like the ABS resin. But this one apparently as well has low odor. So if you're really sensitive to chemical spells like me, this one kind of helps with that a little bit. So next we have rapid resin. So this one is plant-based again. So rapid resin doesn't mean it's for high speed printing. It just means it cures quickly. And that's basically the only difference versus the uh, standard resin or the other plant-based resin. So just curing is faster, but it doesn't matter if you're using a wash and cure station, right? So, so now we have the high clear. So the high clear kind of threw me off the first time I saw it because I wasn't sure um, if that meant that it prints at high speed, especially given its cost. But what it actually means is that it's really, really transparent, highly transparent. And that's what the high clear version is. Now it is extremely expensive. Uh, for those of you that make a lot of money, it might not be expensive to you, but for somebody like me, I find it very expensive. So I'm not going to buy any of this, but essentially that's what high clear means is that it's highly transparent. 
And then we have the new famous high speed resin. So this one is specifically meant for the M5S printer and the M5S Pro. You can print at super high speeds. I believe it's 105 millimeters per hour and you'll have no issues. I have some of this resin on hand already. I got it for free with my printer. So I will run some tests on this and show you as well how it looks. So this is your option if you want to print at high speed, but if you don't care about the high speed, save your money and get the standard or one of the other resins I spoke about. Cause when this stuff's out on sale, it's like 70 bucks a bottle. Good luck selling that to a customer. You're gonna have to triple your cost to the product just to print at high speed. So it may not be worth it. Now I'm sure there are some use cases for it, but for me right now, I can't justify this cost. And that's basically it. So I'll go over everything again. So we have the colored UV resin, the standard resin, standard resin plus, the plant-based UV resin, the plant-based plus. We got the UV tough res resin. We have the water wash resin, the water wash resin plus. We have the ABS-like resin, ABS-like resin plus. Then you have ABS-like pro resin. Then you have high speed resin. And then you have the high clear resin. Um, and then there's version one and two of them all. So there's just so many options. They're all essentially the same thing. Just one has more strength, better tensile bending abilities, uh, low odor. That's it. But for the most part, you can get away with just standard B2 resin or ABS-like resin. Try to aim to pay between $25 to $30. Anything more than that is very expensive. And I don't know how you can make money if you're selling 3D prints with resin costing so much. But in a nutshell, that's basically it. So I hope this video helped everyone. Like I said, I'm going to buy these just so I can make everyone a video and compare the different styles of resins and drop them and smash them against the wall to show everyone the strength and bending. Um, so look out for that video. Like I said, make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so and make sure to check out my Patreon. I put some really cool stuff on there and I do a lot of behind the scenes and uncensored videos as well on Patreon since I can't on YouTube. If you have any questions or comments, again, leave them below and I'll answer them as soon as I can. And I really hope this video helped everybody make a choice on the right resin. Thank you again all for watching. MikeBot Mike out. Thank you for watching my pot entertainment.